Black Box were an Italian dance music trio. Their debut single, Bride on Time, was entirely constructed from a huge sample taken from Lolita Holloway's 1980 disco hit, Love Sensation. But in the video and in live performances, the vocals were lip-synced by Catherine Quinol. Ride on Time went to number one in the UK and went on to be the biggest selling song of 1989. The success of Ride on Time led Black Box to start work on an album. They drafted in Martha Wash from the Weather Girls to record some demos for them. During the session, she recorded vocals for a number of different tracks, some original songs and a cover of Earth, Wind & Fire's Fantasy. All of Black Box's six other singles, Everybody, Everybody, Open Your Eyes, Hold On, I Don't Know Anybody Else, Strike It Up and Fantasy, all contain vocals from those sessions with Martha Wash. None of them credit her as the vocalist, and just like Right On Time, Catherine Quinol mimes the vocals in the video and appears on the cover of the single. Quinol also toured with the group, so would mime the vocals for all the tracks at the gigs. There were a few occasions when she attempted to sing on top of Martha Wash's pre-recorded vocals. No. In September 1990, Martha Wash sued Black Box and RCA Records for commercial appropriation. RCA settled the case out of court in December 1990 and agreed to pay her a substantial fee. RCA also signed her to an eight-album recording contract and financed her national tour. As a result of the lawsuit, there was new federal legislation introduced in the USA making vocal credit mandatory for all albums and music videos. Catherine Quinol left the group in 1991 following the court cases, but Black Box went on to record another album and are still active today. The second album, without Martha Wash's vocals, didn't sell anywhere near what the first album sold, but the remaining members of the group were not hounded out of the music industry or ridiculed like Millie Vanilli. Catherine's account of her time with Black Box mirrors much of the Millie Vanilli story too. She was a model by day and a go-go dancer by night. She would often sing at the end of the night. She enjoyed singing and although she didn't want to quit her modelling career, she jumped at the chance to be part of Black Box. They asked her to be their lead singer. Even though, by that time, Ride On Time was already recorded and the sessions with Martha Wash were underway. Connell assumed that much like European dance music of the time, it would be limited to the clubs and any success would be brief. After she agreed to join, she was told the vocals had been recorded and she was only needed for pictures and videos. So she treated it just like a modelling job. After Ride On Time became a hit across Europe, she felt trapped into continuing her promotional duties. After leaving Black Box, she did try to start a music career on her own. In 1995, she released the single Feel You under the name Back in a Box featuring Katrin, with no success. The ink had barely dried on the settlement with Black Box when Martha Wash found herself in a similar situation again. I didn't know that the whole thing was going on until I saw the video on TV. In June 1990, she'd been paid around $1,000 to record a demo for David Cole and Robert Clavillez. The demo she recorded was never completed, but they used some parts of her vocals to create the chorus of a new song. They had originally intended the song to be for an R&B trio they were working with called Trilogy, but the group turned down the chance to record the song. Nevertheless, they decided to play the unfinished song to A&M Records, who were so impressed they offered them a recording deal just on the strength of the incomplete demo. Using the first initials of each of their last names, they decided to call this new project CNC Music Factory. They brought in unknown rapper Freedom Williams to finish the song around Martha Wash's demo vocals. The song, Gonna Make You Sweat, Everybody Dance Now, was released as CNC Music Factory featuring Freedom Williams. They did credit Martha Wash for her vocal, but just as a backing vocalist, and in the video for the single, Zelma Davis mimes to her performance. Just like Katrin Quinol in Black Box, Selma Davis was presented as the group's lead singer. She's the only female pictured on the artwork and lip syncs in all the videos. She did actually record some vocals for other CNC Music Factory releases, just not this one. Martha Wash contacted CNC Music Factory in the hope of negotiating proper credits and some royalties. The requests were denied as ultimately they believed that the $1,000 and background credit were more than sufficient for her contribution to the recording. Not willing to let it drop, Martha Wash decided to take legal action. 
Martha Wash is suing Clavillis, Cole, and CBS Sony Music for a half million dollars. Even if you got a performer's permission to put one person's voice in another person's body, you do not have the permission of the American public to not be lied to. It's a hurtful thing. And um, it's something that I'm dealing with now. On December the 11th, 1990, Martha Wash sued A&M's parent company, Sony Music, for fraud, deceptive packaging, and commercial appropriation. Sony was not willing to settle out of court. They believed they had done nothing wrong. They had credited her as a background singer, and they argued that on a rap song, the featured performer is the rapper, and the singer of the chorus is rarely credited as a featured performer. This is partly true. If the singer is a session singer or an unknown singer, and they're singing the chorus on a song that features a rapper, it is unlikely that they will be credited as featured. But when the chorus vocalist is well known, they are nearly always credited as a featured performer. I would consider Martha Wash to be well known just for its reigning men, not to mention her work with Sylvester and the Black Box songs. She's more than deserving of a featured credit. Sony disagreed and fought the case for three years before eventually reaching a settlement. They may actually have won had it not been for the precedent set by the earlier Black Box case. Sony paid a fee to Martha Wash, credited her as lead vocalist, listed her as featured on all future pressings and asked MTV to add a disclaimer that credited Wash for vocals and Zelma Davis for visualization to the gonna make you sing that part that, so they'll know. <laughs> if you can if you hit that note. <laughs> Okay, so not that then. Perhaps Freedom Williams has an idea of why she wasn't touring with them. I think Martha being in the business so long, 15 years, 10, 15 years, especially, didn't want to go into a dance January like this. Excuse me, I'm sorry, a what now? I mean, they didn't want to a dance January like this. I think he means genre. But actually, since making the switch from gospel to disco in 1975, Martha Wash has made nothing but music within the genre of dance. But carry on. So she chose really not to go on the road with us, which is the reason why we hired Thelma in the first place, because we didn't have a, a singer to travel on the road. OK, so let's hear what Martha Wash has to say about being asked to tour with CNC Music Factory and turning it down. I was not asked to be a member of the group. I was not asked to travel with them, anything like that. So to me, it was like, well, wow, you know, you, you, you made a hit song off of this woman's voice. How come we can't see her? What's the big deal? Because she's a heavy set woman with a beautiful face and this gigantic, fabulous, tremendous, rock-kicking-ass voice. Somehow or another, the people who do market, marketing research feel that if you're thin, a size four, size six, if you will, you sell better, regardless of how you sound. I'd tell you this, and I don't mean to be rude, harsh, callous, and malign, or vilifying, but I'd rather look at them on stage. Having been certified five times platinum in the USA and selling more than seven million copies worldwide, Gonna Make You Sweat remains CNC Music Factory's biggest hit. Surprisingly, this isn't the first time David Cole and Robert Cavillas had used Martha Wash's vocals on a track without crediting her properly. Before she recorded the vocals for what would become Gonna Make You Sweat, she recorded a demo of a song written by Cole and Cavillas called You're My One and Only. The demo was finished off by adding backing vocals and released under the name Seduction. Although at this point, the name was just a pseudonym for Cole and Clavillis. The artwork for the original release doesn't feature any photographs and instead just credits the producers and the guest rap. The single was an unexpected hit and peaked at number 23 on the Billboard charts. They put together a group to promote the single and recorded a video with them lip syncing to Martha Wash's vocals. The group released an album, Nothing Matters Without Love. This included new tracks they'd recorded, and You're My One and Only, with Martha Wash's vocals still at the front. The album cover credits the three group members with singing all the lead vocals. And the only credit for Martha Wash is buried at the bottom and just for background vocals. When David Cole found out Martha Wash was upset, he offered her 1% of the royalties as a settlement. Martha Wash's lawyer believed a featured performer should get something more like 10%. So just as he was preparing to sue Sony, he also started legal proceedings against A&M Records. A&M Records settled the case in December of 1990. 
But David Cole was still rather dismissive of Martha Wash's contribution to the track's success, stating in the New York Times in 1990 that anybody could have sung the song. 